Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League Week 10 of the 2015 season. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst here. And we will be diving right into this next match here for those on the live stream having some back-to-back -back matches really quickly right now. Um, so I hope the rest of you will uh, hang around and enjoy this next game between, on the blue side, Google Rage Gank. Google, of course, the infamous company that has long since won the internet. They are going to be playing for <laughs> Doctors Without Borders. Uh, that is a charity that sends, uh, excuse me, that sends doctors to war-torn regions of the world and uh, developing countries that are facing diseases that they simply don't have the infrastructure to handle. So, sending those brave doctors uh, to the parts of the world where they are most needed is absolutely one of the most commendable charities out there so fantastic to see them well represented here today and they're going to be playing against on the red side Cerner 2. Cerner is a healthcare company that uh, makes devices and hardware to help optimize the processes uh, for healthcare organizations so uh, as much as uh, we like to say here in America that our healthcare uh, facilities are slow and operate uh, with a lot of lag and a huge amount of wait time once you're down in the office uh, you would have a longer wait if it weren't for this company, so <laughs> they're certainly fighting the good fight on the productivity end of that scale, and they are going to be playing for first hand. Uh, that is a charity that provides funding for children in need of medical procedures who without it would not be able to afford those treatments, so um, absolutely a fantastic charity uh, as, you know, certainly if we can provide a medical procedure for someone who needs it, especially a child, there should be no reason uh, to have a society where we don't get them that help that they need. So fantastic charity fulfilling um, uh, that need in our society. And without further ado, let us hop right into the pick and ban phase here. Uh, I do want to uh, mention for those of you who have been paying attention to the channel um, in the past, we did see for this blue team a strong performance uh, and, and all despite being in losing games, uh, we did see strong performances uh, on a uh, Zed mid and a Sona Sivir uh, bot lane combination. But it looks like we will not uh, be seeing that coming out as, um, or excuse me, a Janna Sivir uh, bot lane combination here, uh, not, not a Sona. Um, uh, and we won't be seeing this coming out uh, because uh, the red side doing their research does have a bit of a target ban coming out into that Janna. Um, and overall, um, some uh, fair bans for both sides. Of course, Lissandra um, seems like the most routine ban nowadays, um, alongside of LeBlanc, who, with that cast in now, uh, coming back in my opinion, but uh, I always have an extra special place in my heart for the Void Walker himself. So, um, LeBlanc, a very reasonable ban here out in this mid lane. Um, and we also see Cassiopeia being banned out as well. Cassiopeia. Uh, with the new item as well, with her movement speed, is able to just explode uh, in the late game with insane amounts of damage, especially if she can land her ultimate to get the full stun. The amount of damage she can throw out with those twin fangs in a sudden burst of damage is nearly unmatched right now. So uh, definitely a very strong man there. Of course, the Hecarim coming into more and more flavor. Um, we're actually seeing him at the pro level in, in the solo lanes now. I know we've been seeing him a lot in the jungle recently, um, at least when I've been queuing, I haven't seen him mostly in the jungle because he just feels better in the jungle. I think those the, the speed ups, the uh, uh, fear, just feels good coming into mid lane with that ultimate. Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely a flex ban there. Um, as we see the Nasus respect ban coming out for the red side. Respect for the Doge is always nice to see. Um, Susan, of course, one of the most insane champions in the game if you make it to late game. So um, we're seeing some scaling bans on both sides, some burst bans on both sides. Um, and it looks like we're going to see the uh, picks coming down to what are uh, displayed on your screen for you right now. Will be a uh, LeBlanc, or excuse me, it will be a Morgana. I was looking at the bans again. It will be a Morgana support coming in. Uh, it'll be nice to see her in that support lane uh, once again, uh, reminding us back to before the last season ended where she was almost exclusively in that lane we've actually now seen her not return to the mid lane yet but actually go top lane uh, in the same aspect that Lissandra has been uh, as she was able to really shove out those lanes if you max that pool first um, you can really create a lot of pressure in that top lane 
And if you rush in early, Zonias especially, you can uh, give yourself a little extra survivability as you charge into the middle of those team fights there uh, and get your ultimate down on everybody. But that will not be the Morgana we're seeing today. We will be seeing her back in the support lane. And the matchup in the top lane will instead be a Kennen versus Scion. It will be nice to see that Kennen coming out. Kennen, uh, very reliant on getting a strong engagement here, uh, which is why we see that Leona, which is why we see that Sejuani. They definitely have some of the strongest engagements, especially when followed up back to back that can lock a team down, uh, especially in these early dragon fights, for long enough to destroy that entire team. Um, and if you can actually get that solar flare landed by this Leona uh, and follow up that CC with the uh, Sejuani, then, I mean, if you can get the lockdown from Sejuani, Victor's going to throw out his CC as well, and that will be enough time from the stun of Sejuani to actually let the Victor stun proc. And if you've gone through all of that CC, you're dead. Sion might not be dead. Sion might have come back to life at that point. But your team is gone. <laughs> so that is definitely what we're going to be looking to see. Uh, or at least the red side is going to be looking to see here uh, from the Cerner 2 team. And of course, that Victor damage uh, is something that is not to be trifled with. Victor uh, has a bit of an unusual um, series of item breaks in that mid lane, bringing a little bit of variability since he does want to upgrade uh, that Hex Core as quickly as possible to get some extra damage in. Uh, he has a little bit of unusual typical back timing, so we'll see how that uh, recall is juggled in the mid lane, if there's going to be uh, a little bit later back from Victor dealing with the power trough from staying in lane, or if he's going to uh, get an early back and have that lane covered for a little while as uh, he opens up possibly an opportunity for a very early roam from the Ari in the mid lane. But uh, we will see how that plays out, of course, for this blue team. Certainly not shy of engagement potential themselves. Pretty much, aside from that jink and all-in uh, style of engagement team here, the Scion Ultimate going to be bringing him to the team fight. Even if he cannot land it, he will always be present in the team fights. Uh, the RA charm, just insane amounts of uh, amount of time you are under that charm's effect, especially given how much it spikes her damage output. Um, the Morgana, again, the ultimate, the Q, going to be so, so strong, uh, especially when combined with that Vi. Again, the Vi ultimate, the Vi Q. So much CC potential, so much chase potential uh, from this blue side. It'll be very interesting to see how these two compositions play out in competition with one another uh, as both sides are going to be looking to get the jump on each other as we get into this game here. As I quickly just check my frame rate here to make sure we're not dropping anything. Yeah, good. Okay. Just making sure. I was a little unsure of that. And we are going to see some beautiful skins here going into this uh I had a point I was going to make, and then it immediately uh, just went right out of my head. Oh, yes, the Jinx, of course, Cuddleball. Of course I was going to talk about Cuddleball. Duh. Um, uh, Jinx is uh, finally s starting to see a lot more play again. I, Of course, Jinx, being the troublemaker she is, has a special place in my heart right along. Um, <laughs> well, let's just talk about Jinx for a moment. Um, so she's a very uh, late-game hyper-carry-oriented champion, so... Um, the, despite the amount of power uh, that this team is going to have during uh, uh, mid-game team fights with that ability to get their wombo combo off, Jinx is certainly going to be more apt to fight in the late game. So we're going to see uh, whether or not this blue side um, is going to be able to handle that Jinx uh, properly scaling with the inherent uh, chase that Ari wants to do, <clears throat> excuse me, that Vi wants to do, that Scion wants to do. I uh, will see if how they, uh, what route they choose to go through that. As Kennen getting a little bit late here is going to be able to spot out this invade completely. He's going to hang around, going to throw down Ward right on the buff to make sure uh, if something is started they will get vision of it. Uh, but a great response immediately answered by this red side here. Um, as we're going to see them. Jumping down here, getting a deep ward in. Uh, gonna see if they're, the blue side comes back. Gonna try and get a jump on them. A little return. Pop right in the face here as they're gonna be going over here. It looks like it's 
uh, will be, they will be seen have fun from this ward here. They will see them coming down. They will know that is two squishy people off the top. And right now, going to be face checking in the bush right into a buckshot. And there it is. Uh, excuse me, not a buckshot. <laughs> Level one, but that regardless is a first blood immediately going over to this Sejuani to help her get rolling here. And with that almost full team participation, uh, that will mean that aside from the top lane, every lane will be getting a bit of a uh, quick advantage here going up to their uh, uh, lanes here to get that early level two. It looks like, yeah, Sion's actually, I saw him waiting particularly for that war. It looks like he might be suiciding for this red buff here. Very interesting choice here knowing that uh, that it was not watched and that they did fall back here. They're going to be having that Vi deal with this. Checking as we saw there, just for a moment, checking that red side to make sure that it wasn't warded. But the question is, will Scion be able to finish this off as it does regen? He does prevent a second tick of regen, so that should be enough. And he does get it! So great play by Scion there. He's gonna uh, be forced to burn a teleport back up here, but that buff denial, fantastic, beautiful play from Scion there uh, to deny that, of course. Now that uh, we are in a more uh, recent set of patches, you do not lose those buffs when you die. So, of course, Sion going to maintain that red buff in his lane. So, fantastic play there, actually. Um, very unique choice, and I, I'm very glad to see something like that. And it's going to certainly benefit this uh, blue team. Absolutely. Great cue there, but unfortunately, Leona still does follow it up. The uh, Chomper is going to be thrown down just a second too late from the Jinx. They're not able to quite follow that up. And that is the early pressure that you will get in this bottom lane from that Leona. Uh, Morgana needs to get those uh, uh, black shields down, but unfortunately at this level uh, does not have those uh, made right now. So absolutely a strong throw right now. Gonna actually cue the minion, unfortunately. And those chompers, again, not gonna be able to do too much. And Jinx taking just minion aggro is gonna be forced away there. Graves looking to get as much damage onto her as possible right now. And having already burned through those health pots, Jinx is going to be vulnerable. Um, Vigan actually looks like back in that lane. I don't want to for sure say. Yeah, she is gone. So, gonna have to play very carefully. Uh, of course, Leona, able to go right through minions, is gonna uh, be looking for any chance she can have to engage. That black shield finger has to be ready for that Morgana. And we're gonna see Sejuani actually going through unwarded territory right now into this bottom lane and here comes Leona giving it a bit away from positioning great black shield from the Morgana there and actually caught up by the flame chompers gonna be forced away by that graves though but overall that is a very even exchange in this bottom lane so not not too bad for this uh, blue side given that they were the side being ganked here so I don't know successfully using that level advantage and the buff. Oh, great, great use of the shout there to stop, say, hey, Ken, and stop that recall immediately. Good charm there, point blank charm actually through the minions. A little bit of mispositioning there from the victor to pause for a moment. Uh, but he is going to be all right. I'm just taking a little bit of damage there, chipped away. He still does have uh, those biscuits he will be munching down on. He will be all right there. Jinx, unfortunately now, though, is out of mana in this bottom lane. She does... Still have that heal. If an engagement should happen, but she will be uh, a little bit hesitant to try and farm with those Q missiles uh, since she won't really have the mana to sustain that at this point anymore. And we see her hanging out just basically trying to soak XP here as she can't even farm despite um, that the push is, of course, uh, in their favor. And uh, yes, that will be a back. Okay, I was going to say with the push going forward, she absolutely has to go back now and she will be doing so. Um, unfortunately, not going to be able, uh, she will have just enough for a pickaxe there, but not uh, able to get too much more than that. Actually, as we see the battle going down the mid lane, Victor throwing down uh, the CC on top of himself, but perhaps was a little bit uh, not far enough forward. Uh, that's definitely what he's going to want to do once that Ari hits 6, but uh, unfortunately she was not 6 at the time, so that was a bit of mispositioning there on that CC, not able to land the stun. But he will make it out of there with his life intact, which is the most important thing as the camera dips away from that cannon. Perhaps rightfully so, as he was able to just 
speed away there as soon as you saw that bike coming in. He will even not miss the CS uh, as he gets right back to lane and lands that shuriken there. Or I'm, I believe shurikens are Zed actually, but you know what I mean. Um, overall, it looks like with this pickaxe advantage now, um, of course Graves is going to have a huge CS advantage now since he hung out in the lane the whole time, but if Vi can come down to this bottom lane quickly uh, with that Q down, they've got to be careful with this minion wave as well. Leona can catch them. Uh, I'm so actually surprised we didn't see Leona go a bit more aggressive there, but uh, now Vi making her way down. <laughs> Great blind Q there, and actually the pool's going to disrupt both of their backs. Um, but that well, Vi is going to uh, be taking a bit of a longer route through her jungle there. Um, so she's not going to be in the bot lane in time to capitalize on that item advantage that Jinx does have. And now with the BF sword uh, finally farmed up, uh, actually going to grab a pink ward as well as good guy Graves here. Um, that uh, item advantage will now be gone and will now be in favor of the blue side here. Great damage coming out from this uh, cannon though. Hold that thought because we're going to see Vi looking to come in. She doesn't have the ultimate though. And she just cues in to take three turret shots in a row. All of a sudden, absolute, uh, a huge amount of damage going on to that Vi. And definitely not at all worth it. Great use of the stun there by Kennen to channel that uh, stack in time to make sure that uh, Scion is stunned up when he needs to go for the last hit onto that cannon minion. So great little micro plays there in this top lane from Kennen to deny as much as he can from that Scion who did have that early advantage because he was able to sneak that red buff. And now it looks like Sejuani is going to be trying to answer uh, that earlier play with a red buff of her own. And she's going to just dash right over that dragon pit there and make it out just fine. But that will mean that is an unsuccessful invade. Just some wasted time, some wasted HP for the Sejuani. Did not even get one of the little minions there from that red camp. And here comes Scion, not going to be able to land that uh, ultimate, but will get him right into position to get some good trades here uh, with with that item advantage now. Certainly uh, going to be creating a lot of pressure there onto that cannon as he evens up the CS in that top lane. He actually does force a back here from the cannon, uh, whose teleport is not up yet, so not the most ideal time for cannon to go back. Uh, if he could have delayed that for perhaps just another wave, that might have been helpful as we see the style double wards in the bottom lane and the Q again followed up through the zenith through by the zenith blade and Jinx doing some good kiting doing the best that she can to answer damage back with those rockets uh, but with the biscuits hopefully that'll be enough for us again to regen back up and not worry too much about that but that will be Scion again since Kennen didn't have that teleport uh, is gonna get some unanswered damage here and Vi, gonna be able to clear out that ward that was just placed. Oh, great shot there, and great follow-up CC. Oh, this could be what they needed with that Morgana chain. We'll get the last proc here. Jinx excited is not gonna uh, miss out on this follow-up kill either. Great play there. That is, so, uh, just to review that, we won't go back and re-watch that because it was so textbook, but uh, fantastic play there to land the Q, even though Vi was already going back. Um, it looks like Sejuani will be forced off here, so I'm going to focus on recapping that um, right now. Perhaps, yeah, no, this, this is definitely the first dragon going over to the blue side. But even though Vi was already retreating away from that, seeing that the Morgana Q was landed, and that Jinx was going back into position, she said, okay, perhaps uh, this won't work out as I wanted to, but just on the off chance it does, let me start going back into position here. And Jinx was able to get the Chompers down in time that time. And the chain CC was enough for Vi to say, okay, it's time. And she went in and she used that um, Relentless Pursuit to get in there and really uh, live up to her namesake there and create some damage. Uh, and what worked out to be two kills going over to the blue side here, the first two kills of the game. And that uh, single-handedly has created the gold advantage now uh, that they are going to be riding off of. And certainly was needed in the bottom lane. Now we see the items now actually back in favor of the Jinx um, with that uh, pickaxe and BF sword. The uh, Graves' only BF sword right now. 
unfortunately not going to be able to defend that pink ward is Morgana, but um, again, fantastic play there with that CS deficit in the bottom lane, and uh, Vi actually being quite a nuisance here, I do not think, let's look back really quickly, I don't think she was able to steal this away though, no, she was not able to, uh, Sejuani was just barely finishing up, and I was actually uh, going to go up there, uh, but thought better of it as soon as she saw that Vi, hanging around here, just in case she can throw out an ultimate, but uh, gonna actually be backing away uh, once she realized that. Uh, actually, hold that thought, because Victor throwing down that ultimate is gonna be dashed away from Vi so he does force the ultimate in reply, um, but the ultimate from Vi not quite up yet, so not able to lay down some return damage onto that Victor, who is just gonna push out that wave into the turret and head on uh, back after possibly this next wave here as well. Excuse me, extended yawn there. Um, this game, game is just too action-packed, it makes me yawn. Um, we are, uh, like I was trying to say before that last engagement broke out though, uh, Jinx now does have the advantage item-wise uh, to get the more favorable trades, but it looks like um, even in addition to that, the level advantage, it looks like they're playing uh, in such a uh, mindset now after being so bullied early on by that graze and zone so well to create what is now a 25 uh, CS lead here in the bottom lane. Uh, they're just not playing as confidently as they should uh, and they're letting graves get away with zoning them even now to extend that lead even further so hopefully uh, they'll take a quick tab and uh, get a look at the situation here and see if they can't play a little bit more aggressively in that bottom lane. Um, but it looks like we're gonna see some action in this mid lane here in a moment. No, it looks like Sejuani actually just taking that camp. Gonna uh, head on back here. Uh, as we see Vi and Scion uh, absolutely making this jungle their own right now. Kennen actually was about to look for him here. But uh, great communication from the team here. Decided to think better of his but Hold that thought. There might be some action in the bottom lane. But actually landing that ultimate onto the Kennen disrupts him. And that will be Vi making it out with her life. Great flash there immediately after the action ensued. And that will be Jinx Black Shield there. Great play by the Morgana. Actually does miss the Q, but good uh, Black Shield time there. Graves actually coming right back in, seeing that all the cooldowns were up for Morgana. And that will be enough to fend them off. Morgana does have to be careful though. Uh, some good poke damage on the way back out, but they cannot afford to trade again with Jinx. Uh, being so low now and unfortunately again the mentality that I was talking about earlier might be playing into the bottom lane even more since they've been playing a little less aggressive than they could have uh, this might be vindication as actually the second prop of that it might be enough to get that already but no she's just gonna spirit rush away ultimates traded again in the mid lane though Victor flashing for that one uh, gonna mean that Ari comes out in the lead overall that time uh, she does still have both of her summoners up here Victor choosing to hang out a little bit longer to try and get a little bit extra gold here before he goes back. Now he will be going back. Um, and Jinx giving a little bit of free time to wail away on this turn in the bottom lane. Now that she does have that AD, she's going to be able to take this Jinx. Of course, living up to the moniker Jinx, the turret destroyer for a reason. There she goes. Absolutely outsmarting all these uh, coppers right now. Now will be Leona, unfortunately. Uh, stopped long enough by that Q to give uh, enough time to get away from that. And here comes Vi, and she actually will be getting this Victor, who I guess didn't go back. He must have canceled that recall. Absolute mistake there. Trying to hang out for a little bit of extra gold here, it looks like. But was not the right decision. Could have gone back, bought some boots, bought some wards instead. Maybe upgraded that trinket a little bit early. Um, but... Definitely was not the right call to stay in lane there, especially with a Vi, who you just cannot get away from since, to remember, his flash was down. So, absolute mistake there uh, from Victor, giving up a kill onto that Ari, who uh, is now going to be even more of a pain to deal with there in that middle lane. Looks like Zajwani will be able to keep the uh, minions off the turret 
Uh, but they're going to be clearing out the vision because that victor was not up. And it looks like they will uh, be looking to get something in this bottom lane here before this dragon starts off. They will be running right into some vision. So they won't be able to make too much out of it. Oh, they do force the flash from Graves though. As of course that bottom lane turret is now down thanks to Jinx. Uh, they were, they would have been able to pursue as far as needed there. Looks like they're instead going to try to go for this crab right now. The sign I'm just trying to deal with this cannon. Uh, it was just being uh, as annoyingly mobile as cannons are wont to do here. Looks like the crab's actually going to be going over to the red side here. So they will be getting that speed trying up uh, and having some uh, irreversible vision. Uh, for the course of this dragon. It looks like the blue side going to group here, finish off the last little bit of that turret. Great rotation there. Uh, let them focus on getting their control around the dragon pit. Know that you can re-collapse there before they can get the dragon finished. Uh, and just take the free turret in the middle lane, finish off that last bit of damage. And now Graze, my life full turret, it seems, uh, is going to be the case here. As Cyan <laughs> actually lands the blind ultimate into the bush there. Graves with nowhere to go. Gonna be trading a life for turret. Not sure that was the correct decision, especially as Leona goes down as well. And now that will be uh, the dragon in a nearly uncontestable state since Sejuani did have to blow her ultimate to try and save Leona, uh, though unfortunately she was unable to. And that will be the second dragon of the game going over to this blue team here. And despite what was uh, a, perhaps an overly cautious mentality in the bottom lane for the blue side, which set them behind a little bit. Um, they are going to be able to come back here through those two dragons, uh, through this uh, counter jungling they're getting down, getting that blue onto Ari now, uh, and also getting uh, uh, those kills. Of course, six to one right now in favor of the blue side here. Absolutely creating a huge advantage, which we're now seeing uh, in the overall gold here is looking for a pick, looking to extend that lead. Great charm there. Is that gonna be no? That will be the solar flare going down on the Ari though. Ari gotta be a little careful here. There's the ultimate from Kennen. She now uses the spirit rush defensively, but that is gonna get her in a good position to get a lot of damage down on that Ken. So overall, I believe that's a favorable trade for the blue side. Perhaps getting a little desperate is the red side when. Those engagement attempts are uh, perhaps more cautiously withheld from the blue side. Uh, the red side thinking, of course, we got to make something out of this situation right now. Um, but unfortunately, they were unable to do so there. It looks like Sajwani not even daring to get within range to smite that out, unfortunately. Going to be giving up that camp to Scion. Again, the second proc of Victor uh, landing there on Ari, but um, Ari, with a little bit of magic resistance now, is going to be all right to live through that um, as they continue to use that Scion who has the teleport up in the top lane to create that split push threat. Keep that cannon occupied here, as we're seeing, and actually opting to go uh, build a Tiamat after those defensive MR items here. Uh, gonna get a bit more damage into him, uh, be get, become a bit more of a split push threat with that uh, auto attack reset the team uh, does offer. And throw down some deep wards as well. As we see again that vision line ever creeping deeper into the red side's jungle right here. Looks like they are actually going to be able to defend that ward alright, so uh, that raptor passive won't be too much, mean too much here. Are you going to get a good amount of damage down onto that Sejuani uh, when she actually lands that charm? Even Sejuani, uh, not tanky enough as she does not have any MR build right now to survive through that damage, though. The raw amount of HP is going to be enough for her to live in the meantime. Kennen opting to give up the CS to try and trade a little bit with Sion, try and push him out of that top lane so he doesn't just get bullied at his own turret. Um, but doesn't look like he's going to be too effective. Scion, uh, with those MR items completed, just too tanky right now. I 
Looks like uh, we're seeing a bit more of a passive game coming out now from this red side as blue side trying to force confrontations here, uh, notably in the bottom lane right now. There's the uh, teleport from the side and it looks like he might be burning his ultimate as soon as he gets down here. Great CC chain! And that is the fight the red side needed, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Uh, Scion does come in a little bit delayed, but it won't even matter, as that is a 4 for nothing. A 5 for nothing, an ace from the blue side. Let's watch that fight one more time. Absolutely an insane amount of action. I got a little speechless there watching this fight, of course. Going to be caught out a little bit, but Keely landing on the squishy, some chain CC, and that is the Jinx being forced to run away as much as possible, missing some critical time there. But that did not matter in the end as uh, they were taken solo by the Ari, who was putting out so much damage during that fight um, that they were simply able to finish this off. And the Zap, not even needed from the Jinx, going to be enough to finish them off. And that will mean uh, Jinx actually oh, going to survive that turret at the last shot. Um, but they are quite low here, um, so they're not going to be able to press any further with uh, the fairly low death timers right now but that will mean a full ace for nothing puts this at uh, a 7k actually 8k gold lead in favor of this blue side with two dragons to none right now 11 to 1 in kills at the 20 minute mark here 22 minutes this is absolutely painful there's uh, it appears to be no chink in the armor for this red side Uh, as we take a quick moment to look at the wardy, I mean, they've got a lot of deep wards thrown around. There are some uh, patches in vision as the red side's fighting to reclaim the vision of just their own side of the jungle right now. Um, but that is absolutely what they have to do. They've got to keep investing in those pink, pink wards to prevent this from getting any more out of hand. But uh, when you've got an Ari that, um, at least from my eyes, hasn't missed uh, in recent memory any of her charms. Uh, that's going to be devastating when you're one zero and 6 I mean, of course, it would be better to be 6-0-1 as Ari. Um, but what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to definitely take that and you're going to uh, build the build your items from those. Um, uh, the CS advantage. Uh, though she actually does technically have a disadvantage right now over uh, the victor. All those kills and assists bringing in the extra gold for her are going give to give her a bit more of an item advantage here. She's going to be able to press that. Uh, along with her level advantage here. Victor, actually the blue buff resetting here, making itself contestable. Oh no, what a horrible exchange here. And gonna actually go over to the graves though, not a worst case scenario on Vi. Gonna dive in to get a little thirsty, wanting that blue buff to go over to herself there. Opting to not take the smite out on it um, to try and save it for the dragon fight. Gonna get a little greedy there. Gonna be punished. And now all of a sudden this dragon is not already over. Uh, might be able to be contested by this red side with that Vi down. Though uh, the blue side is able to stall this out right now. Since they do have that advantage. I'm not even sure in a 4v5 who would win for sure here. As of course Scion is up. The carries are still up. Um, so while they might not get to pick their engagement, this is definitely what they need though if they can finish off Ari, and they do! That is another person down, Vi has respawned, but she will be late to get into this dragon, and now Kennen, so low, gotta be careful himself right now, the Jinx rocket, not gonna land onto Kennen, Kennen gonna be able to make it out of there alive, and it looks like this dragon will be smited away by the red side, the Sejuani getting that, but all of a sudden, here comes the damage, Making them pay right now. Good ultimate from Sejuani. Actually going to save her own life here. Now Jinx ultimate is down. But she doesn't need it. The zap is plenty. Unfortunately for Sejuani. That uh, Scion uh, did spot her out. And he does see uh, an opportunity to flash out here. And is going to uh, throw down one more shot under her. Uh, blowing. Again that was of course uh, the Righteous Glory active. Didn't say, want to save that, but threw it down when he knew he had to to secure that kill. And that will result in four kills for this blue side. Though they were able to prevent the third dragon, which does give a very critical buff of move speed. Um, they were not able to uh, prevent the follow-up kills immediately afterward here.
Leona's hatching a ward right now. Keeping her eyes on that Vi. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it uh, looks like this game might be running away from the red side here. Doing their best to contest those objectives and doing it successfully, but not able to get out of there immediately after, which is certainly uh, what makes it worth it or not. You know, if you're if you're going to uh, be forced into a situation where you're going to spiral more kills down the drain, it might be better just to seed those objectives, but you absolutely have to. You just got to take those fights and hope you can make them favorable at this point. So I'm definitely not the target they want to engage on here, though they had, uh, they, with their lack of vision, they didn't know. Um, but they did have him fairly out in the open there, only the Morgana to back him up. But now that the blue side has grouped again, it looks like they're going to use that push in the top lane from the minions uh, to be enough of a distraction here to push down the mid lane themselves. And uh, if Vi, if, actually it looks like they're not going to stick out with this mid lane here. Kennen was forced to go to the top lane, but it looks like they're all going to rotate up to the top lane, try and catch out some more kills in the jungle right now. They are throwing down pink ward in that bush, but unfortunately for them, there is a uh, green ward in the opposite bush there, so they will realize that after Graves throwing the smoke screen right on top of them, uh, which should be blindly if he didn't have that ward there. So they're going to just finish rotating up to the top lane and try and take this turret here. Um, Victor does have quite a bit of strong wave clear here along with uh, that AoE from Graves, so they are able to throw uh, those minions right into their CS score. Um, and not have to worry about that, but it looks like they might be feigning a Baron right now. They're not sure if this is warded, of course. Scion with that ultimate. Flying in wait. Gonna have to pick his spot carefully here. Victor is right at the front. It looks like the blue side gonna opt to recall as a group right now. Perhaps uh, throw in some good item breaks for themselves. Uh, get some trinket upgrades as we see. Uh, in fact, that's exactly what's happening. Some trinket upgrades are coming out. Sion uh, looking to uh, finish one of those items. Unfortunately, was not able to do so in that last back. Um, but it's going to be right back here using that teleport to the middle lane. And going to prevent any um, punishment from this red side. And as we look at the turret score, 5-1. to one in favor of this blue side here. I mean, whether, whether or not they were able to contest the uh, major objectives of the dragon, losing that map control uh, is absolutely critical at this point, and it's going to be a way that the blue side is going to continue to be able to press their advantage on getting those deep rewards down. And that Q does land onto a target, but not the right target there, unfortunately for that Morgana. Well, looks like they're going to just be hanging out, placing their buffs onto their carries, uh, perhaps looking to start setting up for the next dragon here, uh, which is going to be up in a minute 40 right now. See if they can catch out anybody. Actually, great charm there. Instant reaction. Are we going to see? No, no Jinx ultimate coming out. Um, they do not know where the cannon is. They're going to have him back up though. Victor does get his blue buff though, so a small victory there for the blue side. They definitely need to take them where they can get them. Excuse me, fall, small victory for the red side. Uh, who needs to take them when they can get him. Looks like Vi uh, did opt to uh, go for a more uh, damagey second item with that Trinity Force. Bringing out all the threats that she can right now. And Morgana actually not able to land that Q. Almost got it. That definitely would have meant a key engagement. And Scion looking to still follow up on it. Does force the flash here. And does get a little bit of chain CC on the Victor, but there's another flash. Unfortunately, the minion did block that Q, so it wasn't needed by Victor. But good reaction time on that flash to not risk the minion block. However, that is two flashes on fresh cooldowns now on the two carries for this red side as that dragon is about to spawn. And now Graves caught out by that Morgana Q. No, going to be zoned away. Not enough people there to follow up with some chain CC in time. That's like keeping their cool as much as they can. Morgana absolutely on point when she has that vision. 
Landing those, and there's the righteous glory coming out as the engagement does happen. And Jinx, they're jumping on, trying to get to the back line, and they're doing so, but not enough. They're so low, but uh, the flash is being forced there. Not quite enough, and Ari gonna be able to flash again. All these flashes being burned in this team fight, as opposed for the red side who had to burn theirs earlier. There's the crit on the Q, and Jinx gonna think about 1v1ing him, but no. It's gonna be the Scion who takes the kill. And that should be an uncontestable dragon now. Graves doesn't even have his ultimate to try and contest this here. So he's gonna just take the, those minions in the bottom lane and try and back out before it will cost him his life here. As he does have some good vision coverage there. By actually uh, able to position herself quite forward onto this Graves. Graves perhaps thinking he's actually a little confident right now knowing that those vision uh, uh, wards are down. He saw that there was no backup coming to the Morgana, at which point he did, of course, back away. Well, that is the third dragon of the game going over to this blue side here. And that will give them the critical movement speed they need here to start making these plays even more. And, of course, we spoke at the outset of the game about Jinx, who's going to be looking to get into the late game. And whether or not, despite how strong of a mid game they have uh, with that, especially if they go Trinity Force Vi, um, whether or not they're going to be able to make the most out of that uh, late game Jinx during the time. And when you have a Jinx that goes 9-0-5, you're a late game Jinx no matter what time it is. So absolutely that question has been answered by this blue side here. As we see the buff being transferred over, actually <laughs> being taken by the last auto there. Uh, from the Vi, unfortunately, uh, that training force gives you a little bit of riskiness with those crits. Perhaps this could be the beginning of dissension among the ranks of the blue side. Uh, as we see some contention here for, for uh, that Skull Crab. And Kenan not going to be able to do anything. We'll pop that zone get a little bit of extra damage down in the meantime. Actually, Jinx going to be denied the ultimate kill, which was on point. Um, but regardless, that will be the cannon going down for a painful 30 seconds. And it looks like they're going to try and engage right onto this blue team. Where low enough, they do get the turret. But that's going to be immediately one after another. People going down, uh, trying to give his life for the team is Leona. Or her life, excuse me. But uh, it doesn't look like that will be enough. Graves also trying to bait away for the rest of the team. Sejuani uh, going to be able to make it out with her life. But... That's not going to mean much when you have a team that can just go right over and annihilate Baron with Jinx's attack speed, uh, with Scion's tankiness, with a more damagey vibe. Absolutely going to be able to tear through this Baron as we watch that HP bar just melt right now, already at half health. And there he goes. Over to the blue side is this Baron. Um, and now at this point, you got to start to wonder what can the red team do here? Uh, they've been trying their absolute best to make the most out of what engagements they can find and try and trade objectives where they can. Again, trying to at least finish off the outer turrets um, to even up that global gold disparity uh, in that 5-2 to two turret advantage. But at this point, there's a 15k gold lead in favor of the blue side. It just feels like there's nothing you can do at this point if you're the red team. You gotta... Try and keep up your mental fortitude as much as possible to know, okay, well, we're just going to turtle inside our base as much as possible. This is as rough as it's going to be. The next uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the game are going to be as rough as it will be, but Jinx is about to cap out on her items again. Horrible to have to say that when you're uh, not the team with the Jinx, but she's almost got that bloodthirst to finish. There's only one item to go. If we can play a bit of an attrition game, and outlast them. Try and use uh, Victor and Graves as much as possible to wave clear. To turtle through your base as much as possible. To try and last out the Baron buff. To try and wait it out. I mean, it might be possible that, I mean, if they can last it out, of course, Jinx is going to immediately answer that question as they were out of position. Trying to defend that top lane. Didn't realize as they had no vision. Didn't realize that this Four members of the team here were on the bottom side. Scion making it seem like they were all grouped for top. And now, too late, rotating to the bottom lane is going to surrender that top side to Scion, who will, with the Baron buff, absolutely be able to take that top lane turret, especially since he did build 
uh, the Ravenous Hydra with that auto reset going to easily be able to clean out that top lane turret on his own. As we see here already dropped down to half points. Uh, not going to be able to do anything about that. And now the base being cracked open for the red side. The game of turtling uh, is no longer as viable an option here. Though certainly I mean it only ever was so much viable but uh, that last rotation is definitely going to be a painful one for the red side. It's going to cost him. And now with Scion having so many minions as he does up here, able to just ignore them. Hold on, because that is the fight breaking out. Let's jump back for a moment and watch this engagement happen here. Of course, kind of taking a little bit of poke, but that's not going to be any uh, meaningful engagement here. It might be the Vi just jumping right in. No, actually, Ari just spirit rushing back and forth. I apologize I missed that again let's just jump back one more time here keep an eye on this Ari who's uh, is spot out in vision despite what she thinks but just able to land a charm over onto Graves who did not realize there was a ward there stepping forward trying to do what he can to defend Ari away and that is absolutely gonna mean that this is indefensible at this point and there goes the whole base and it's just a matter of these last few kills and that will be the surrender before the last kills do come out. And that will be the game going over to Google Rage Gank beating out Cerner 2. As we get over to the score screen, hopefully in the last game we did have some uh, client technical issues. And we're having them again in this game. I apologize to everyone. I'm not able to display the final score screen here. Um, but that was the end of the game. Um, and the absolute snowballing potential of a team like that, um, if you can get Jinx uh, to her late game even quicker uh, than normal, then she's absolutely going to be something you cannot deal with in the mid game. You are just going to get railroaded. There's absolutely nothing you can do at a point like that. So, um, though there might have been some uh, opportunities a bit earlier in the early game, especially since Jinx was zoned out of quite a bit of farm in the early game. She did have a power trough because she was not um, landing uh, that CS that she needed to keep up with Graves. But unfortunately, the ganks into that bottom lane were enough to even up that score, give Jinx a little bit of an advantage, who was playing safely, which turned out to be the right strategy in the long run. And the rest of her team was able to create enough positions for her to wail away in the back line as Jinx uh, certainly is excited to do whenever she gets the opportunity. So in the end, that will be the game going over again to Google Rage Gank who beat out Cerner 2 in a decisive showing here. Uh, if you want to keep up with uh, these teams or any of the other teams on the schedule, you can always go to the screen or to the website displayed on your screen now. AfterHoursGaming.tv. All the schedules and matches will be posted there, and you can always stay, of course, tuned to my channel as well. Every Sunday, I will continue to stream these games live. We do have one more game for uh, the the day in an hour. Uh, that will be Facebook Team Facebook versus Google Ward Search. Um, but it, for that is the game for this game. <laughs> so let me wrap this up here and thank you all for watching. Of course, feel free to uh, subscribe to this channel if you would like to see uh, the uploads as soon as they are, they are available. I will be making the recordings of all of these games that are casted live available to you for your reference and to spread around to brag, of course, if you are on the winning team. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the match and I will see you guys in one hour.